Plain Chocolate. I'm here at ICAST 2017 at the TFO booth. I want to talk to you a little bit about the ESOX rod that I helped design with Temple Fork Outfitters. Uh, this is a unique rod in the fact that the flies that we're throwing on average are about 12 inches. So there's some unique issues that go with throwing flies that big. So some of the things that we run into with that are the fatigue factor in casting these big flies. So I'm going to take this section apart to kind of show you the, the meat and the bones about this rod. And that's the grip. Traditional grips and fly rods are all cork. And what happens when you're throwing big flies all the time is you have a lot of tension on your thumb and your forefinger back and forth throughout the hours and days casting these big flies. And what we found, and it doesn't matter whose rod it is, it's just a matter of cork not working for this application. Uh, so what would happen is the rods, the cork on the rod would separate. So as we were going back and forth with these, the, the cork would separate here or split, so it was a fail. So we decided to go with this composite cork, extend the grips out, because another problem that happens as the flies get bigger, I noticed I would want to grip higher and higher up on the rod, so we extended the length on these grips compared to the average grip would be about here to here. So we extended it up about four inches. And what happens is you get more leverage and you can rest the rod against your forearm, which creates a whole lot more leverage on your back cast and your forward cast. So what happens there is it relieves all the stress on your wrist, your elbow, and your, and your shoulder, which allows you to be able to fish longer throughout the day without the fatigue. The other unique deal with this rod is we extended the butt on it. And a lot of times what will happen too and you notice it's not burled on the end, it's, it's flat. So what happens a lot of times if you have these burled uh, end caps on here, you will end up having bruises on your forearm. So what we were able to do is we could take these things just by trial and error and fishing constantly day in and day out, pinning this rod against your arm, throwing these bigger flies. Uh, even though this rod is called the Esox, we use this for throwing big bunker flies for giant stripers. Uh, you could throw, this rod is called marlin, sailfish, stuff like that, but small marlin. But anyway, we didn't go with a line specific size with this rod either. Um, we went with a four to 500 grain and a three to 400 grain, which is for the three to 400 grain would be throwing flies from six to 10 inches long. Uh, the bigger grain rod, the four to 500, would be for throwing flies from say 10 to 15, 16, 17 inches long. And again, this is called the Esox, and it's not uncommon for a, a muskie, which is what I guide for, to eat a fly 15, 16, 17, 18 inches long. So sometimes you want to throw stuff that are larger. And it's not about the fight of the fish and how strong these fish are. It's about delivering that bigger food item to these fish cast after cast after cast without fatigue. So being able to not pigeonhole the rod on specific line weight because the, li the line in the rod is going to change depending on the fly size. And that's why we, we made it more universal. So if you're throwing a smaller fly on this four to 500 grain rod, you may not need a 500 grain line. You may be able to drop down to a 400 grain line. So this, this allows you to play with different line sizes to match the type of fly size that you're casting, which I think is very important. The other thing is, again, with this, this longer fighting butt, not only that, you can turn this into a switch rod if you are getting a little more fatigue throwing these bigger flies. The other thing is, again, a lot of times a lot of things happen with muskies and pike is you'll have fish follow and we go into what we call a figure eight. And that is, that is a general term for, for moving the fly in a big circle or a figure eight motion at the boat. And what this does also is you're able to what we call stir the pot. And you can take your, your non-casting hand, whether you're light, left or right-handed, and use that non-casting hand to manipulate the rod around the boat when you're doing this figure eight maneuver. And what, what that allows too is it takes all the fatigue off the casting arm. So these are other, these are big things that make casting large flies daily a lot easier.